we we'll, we'll appreciate the fact that we can no longer do agriculture the way we've done it for generations. Things have changed and climate change is beginning to bite. Today's entrepreneur is making fertilizers to make farming a lot easier. Here's a story. So my name is Luswabi Joseph. I'm the special project manager at Marula Protein. We do production of uh, black soldier fly larvae, recycling of organic waste from the cities into uh, feed for animals, food for plants, carbon for the earth, and um, employing the future. So we started uh, in 2018, but this started as uh, research. So we were basically looking how best can we actually solve the four major problems that were into Uganda. One of the major problems that we had was the lack of a reliable source of animal feed that we can use in our animal production. We looked at what is the current feed that was being used, which is the silverfish. But then the matter of fact that they add a lot of sand actually lowers the nutrient composition of this feed. Two, farmers having a reliable source of fertilizers to use. So what was actually on the market was fertilizer that is imported, very expensive, and at times labels that were placed on the packaging materials was not actually the nutrient composition inside. So farmers were being cheated. Three, which is actually the major cause, Kampala generates over 3,800 tons of waste on a daily basis, of which 70% of this is organic waste. This is a huge problem, not only to Kampala as a city, but then to all the cities. And getting a reliable system that is actually going to recycle this organic waste was a problem. So protein actually has the solution to manage, to manage this waste on a commercial basis while producing results that are going to impact the world. Because once this waste is actually taken to the landfill, it's going to release the greenhouse gas, gases. This, we are looking at the globe, climate change. So it's already changing the climate. But then what if we don't have to actually worry of the organic waste because we know it's going to actually be diverted and then the carbon is going to be put somewhere else? then that would be our solution. Then the fourth problem, the high unemployment of our youths. If you look at protein, our business, we're actually not actually eliminating any of the industries. We are promoting the existing industries, supporting and creating a new line of industry that is going to actually bring a lot of people with, it is going to require their expertise. So we are creating a new virgin industry to employ lots of youths. We are looking at employing at least 2,500 youths. So we are playing around with the life cycle of a fly. The fly will lay the eggs. The eggs will hatch into the larvae. The larvae will now further grow into the pupa. Every step here gives us what we are actually doing. Now, how do we do this? It all starts from the market. What you will see here at our recycling plant is the second process. Since we don't have a waste separation system, we begin with sorting off the organic waste in the markets so that we can attain high purity and we are very sure that what we get is what we're actually going to use in our production line. Once this waste is delivered, as you have actually looked at it, it is going to be processed using the new lines of machines that we have actually attained, making it a pest and then stored into the drums so as to ferment. In the process of fermenting, we are already cutting off the oxygen, initiating anaerobic respiration, and eliminating some of the pathogens that would not actually work without oxygen. We shall leave it for just a period of three to four days to one week, and then take it into the mixing. In the mixing, we are looking at getting a uniform composition that is going to be used as feed for the larvae. In the feeding, we are going to use 90 to 95% organic waste as you see. And then, after it is thoroughly mixed very well, we now input it into the crates at a consistent dense. At this plant, we actually do the production of just two stages. We have the larvae and the pupa. In our breeding site, we automize the process so that we can attain a high output from every cage. So, on a daily basis, we take the pupa to Namanve, where we have our breeding center, into the automated greenhouse. In the automated greenhouse, we are looking at obtaining 
a constant and optimum temperature, optimum humidity, and optimum light. When we have all these parameters, then we can guarantee a high egg output. When the eggs are obtained, they are going to be put into the automated incubator so that we obtain every, every, every egg has to hatch into a baby larvae. The baby larvae will only stay for five days and then we bring them to this site. Now, it's the baby larvae that we shall input onto the crate to do the recycling of the organic waste. The baby larvae are very small and they will grow 30 times their initial body size, feasting on this organic waste that is input into the crate. It will take only seven days for this organic waste to be actually fully utilized by the larvae. The larvae will grow 30 times their initial body size. Then they will take in the feed, being broken down by the enzymes, and they pass out a poo. Now, the poo is a byproduct, which will now we shall talk about as, a by, as an organic waste. Now the larvae will be taken actually to process and then we further get the products that we should sell onto the market. So when we look at who buys our products, so for the feed, we have our biggest clientele as the pig farmers, really doing well, as well we also have the poultry farmers for the feed. Because once we take out the oil, it's really good and uh, some farmers have actually tested and they've seen promising results on the poultry. So it works very well when you lower the fat. When you look at the fertilizer, we are looking at coffee farmers who are our biggest clientele. And then we are looking at farmers who are going to do uh, vegetables, farmers doing uh, citrus, farmers doing maize, soybean. It is across. We started as a research. We had small containers. We're now talking of thousands of crates. We initially started with recycling 100 kilograms of organic waste. We are now doing 12 tons of organic waste every day. This is a massive achievement. Two, very few people know about what we do in terms of uh, the product, but then we are currently outstocked on the feed. So that is massive. Getting big pre-orders on the fertilizer is really massive. Knowing that our fertilizer is one of the most virgin products that is going to actually change the agriculture sector of the nation, like Uganda, and then having a system that is really worth scalable to all the cities. So what we have is not a local solution, it is something that is for the entire nation and for the entire globe. Scaling this system to manage the accumulating quantities of organic waste. Our first future plan is already on ground, as you've seen the new line of machinery, which is looking at actually increasing the recycling of waste. We are looking at recycling 95 tons Now, on this show, we're committed to sharing with you tips on how you can make money, especially in these changing times. And today, we have some very good thoughts. I operate schools, and uh, schools are cunning in such a way that when the term is starting, money keeps on coming in. And most times, school proprietors forget that the same money that has come in is going to take us for the next four months. So we have gained, as the Eaglet schools, because before a term starts and before a year starts, we always have to budget and ensure that all the facets, all the departments, all the expenses, the, the current, the fixed expenses, the variable uh, costs and expenses are all captured within an organization. And it's because of that that we rarely have what we call a deficit for the sense, for the lack of uh, clear budgeting. Many schools suffer greatly by the second or the third month of the term, they don't have enough to go through. And that's where you hear issues of non-payment of salaries. That's where you hear when children are complaining, they're not able to have all the requirements they're supposed to get at a school. Now, Ugandans are known to have a poor savings culture, but sometimes it could be the tools that are needed to actually drive this culture that are lacking. Now, in tech segment today, we'll look at one of the tools that has been developed locally to help deal with this problem. My name is Peter Antumwa and Kalulwe, and I'm the team leader of Bimanuiza, Uganda Limited. Now, Bimanuiza is a social enterprise that seeks to create a financially knowledgeable 
disciplined and prosperous society. And we come up with very simple and innovative tools to help the community manage their finances better. And some of them are like piggy banks, the Teleka Co-op, and financial awareness trainings, and uh, talks, basically. Okay. So the Teleka Co-op was birthed as a result of interacting with our customers and, and clients, who especially had bought the piggy bank and they wanted to know how much money there was in the piggy bank before they can break it and bank that money. As a result of that, we had to come up with a tool which can help them track that amount. Every time they deposit in the piggy bank, they update the app, and from that, we're able to provide for them that solution for tracking. So we created the Telecaco app to help the customers track how much money they have saved, given that they need to, monitor their, their financial goals. So with Teleka Co, the client downloads the app on, our, on Play Store and they are able to log in and set their goals. There is a portion that shows uh, save, set a goal. So I will know I want to buy uh, a plot of land or I want to pay school fees and you determine the amount prior. Having determined the amount, you input that, that amount in the app and the duration for which you want to attain that goal. Then every time you deposit money, you go and update the app. In updating the app, they will be able to know how much has been saved and it alerts you on either a daily basis, weekly basis or monthly basis on the progress of your saving. We download the app, input our goals, and then it will alert you through the process on achieving a goal. Where we are falling short, you will be notified that this week you didn't save, yet you're supposed to save on a weekly basis. It does not distort your behavior or the way you're managing your money. You can still, you can still continue saving in your piggy bank, you save in your bank account, in your mobile money wallet, it is okay. And all we, we do right after saving, you update the app and put that transaction or that entry for monitoring purposes. And that helps the ordinary Ugandan in such a way that at the end of the day, if it is a loan that I am managing, I will be able to know I am at 70% of the loan, I am at 30% of my school fees. We've added another feature of uh, saving tips. We know that People lack knowledge, and it's from the knowledge that they start the savings behavior. The behavior change starts from information and knowledge. And with, this, with the Telecaco app, we've incorporated saving tips on the app. You can, when you download it, you'll be able to see the tips, and they keep reminding you on what you need to do, the do's and don'ts. Save as soon as you earn, uh, save with a goal, the tips are there. We've also added another feature of the financial advisors on the, on, the, on the app. And it's from the financial advisors that you can easily pick any number there, call them up, talk to them, and you get guided in everything you want to know about financial management. Well, that's all we had for you on this show, Money and Markets. Thank you for being part of the show. Remember, we are live on Twitter, we are on YouTube and Facebook. So don't hesitate to drop us a line so that the conversation continues. Like we always say, businesses are going concerned. Until next time, I've been your host, Charles Boji. For me and Tim, I'd like to wish you a very good evening. God bless.